The following is a presentation of TFNN. Live at TFNN, the P Power Trading Hour, with your host, David White. Now, the author of The Path of Least Resistance and The Tech Insider, David White. And I'm going to take a quick look at the market here before we get started. Since we've got so much action, we got some action. I like to call it smackshin. In my early days in the chat rooms out there, that was when the market was actually moving and doing something. Uh, we've got it uh, doing something, and uh, I don't think it's that unsurprising. We're going to get to the reason why uh, in a minute, uh, but... Uh, I'll just take a look at the volume here real quick and see what we have. Uh, S&P's at uh, 1401. Uh, we've got uh, 2.8 uh, billion shares. Uh, this is uh, just uh, slightly after uh, 2 o'clock with two hours trading. That projects out to about a 4.2 billion share day. Uh, so we will be watching this very closely. This is a uh, wise, wide price spread with high volume, which is a sign of weakness in the marketplace. Uh, 1395 was uh, one level of support. Uh, we did break down below 1408 today. Uh, so that's yet a about the 10th signal saying uh, that this market is going to be weak. I've been talking for about two weeks about uh, tax selling. Uh, that is, uh, with uh, the fiscal cliff looming, uh, what are the chances that uh, capital gains uh, rates are going to go up? And if you're sitting on a big uh, uh, two-year, you know, that March of 2009 low, you, know, you could be sitting on some pretty big earnings out here. Uh, do you want to pay uh, well, 25% or 35%? I think uh, people today decided to exit stage left in one hurry. And uh, when you do that in the market, it's kind of like yelling uh, fire in a crowded theater. Uh, those exits are always uh, fairly narrow, and it uh, makes a big uh, move out there. But, uh, you know, this is Wednesday. It is November 7th. Uh, we finally have gotten through uh, those elections. And uh, probably the best line I heard yesterday was, uh, if uh, I hear Gallup and Pew in the same sentence again, uh it better be about a horse that just uh, had gas. I don't want to ever hear about those two things again together. I'm so sick of them. And uh, that's kind of the way I felt, too. So uh, off uh, off of the elections, right into the fiscal cliff, into tax selling. Uh, again, uh, you know, put it in this uh, year. Uh, probably going to make a huge amount of difference. And if you've been sitting on uh, some gains, uh, let's say uh, Apple or uh, some of these other big ones, uh, you might be sitting on some monstrous gains out here, and it's uh, well worth uh, putting in uh, and your sell order now. Uh, if you think uh, you're going to lose 10% before the end of the year, eh, probably not a bad bet. Uh, so I suspect that tech selling will go through maybe even into the end of the year. Uh, when we look at it, there's a few other things I'm going to get into. Uh, but uh, like I said, I've been bearish. Uh, been looking at that 1350 level on the S&P cash. I suspect this is the first step down. Uh, we'll have the next step down over the next few days and one more, and we'll probably be to uh, 1350 eh, probably by Thanksgiving time or a little earlier. Uh, I think we'll f probably figure out that retail sales numbers are going to be weak with everybody probably buying plywood to fix their houses in the Northeast uh, and just not getting around to it. Uh, I think, uh, you know, we've got a lot of things going on and probably talk about some of the reasons that I've been short. Uh, we were short in the daily newsletter. Uh, we had puts, we had shorts. Uh, we even added a long position today uh, that is the counter uh, to the marketplace and uh, they pretty much put a, a reason in uh, why we're going to be short, I mean long that position for a while. One of the few longs that uh, I think uh, makes sense in this market. Anyway, uh, today is Bittersweet Chocolate Day with almonds. Uh, bittersweet chocolate is a sweetened form of dark cho chocolate that does not contain any milk in either liquid or dry form. But uh, the National Confectionery Association, yeah, NCA, uh, has all these little days with different uh, chocolate in it. But uh, I always look at this starting off the day on something generally bright. 
bittersweet chocolate. Eh, a nice, it's kind of the change up of chocolate out there. You've got nice uh, regular chocolate, always very sweet and milky. Uh, this is kind of like the screwball or the change up pitch out there uh, if you were into baseball. Eh, kind of nice. I kind of like dark chocolate myself, especially with a little red wine. Uh, earning short squeezes, uh, we could be looking around here. Uh, Soda tried this morning, S-O-D-A. Uh, it's got about a 40% uh, short interest panel. I did not check that, but I think that was supposed to come out also uh, before uh, the market P-A-N-L. See if anything came up of that. Universal display. Uh, let's see what we got here. Uh, off 9%, it came out. Uh, yeah, 32 is a high today. Uh, 28.91 is a low, so uh, 29.09. We'll look at that in charts a little bit later. Uh, other ones, Caribou, I think, is after the bell tonight. That's Caribou Coffee, CBOU. Let me pop that up, uh, CBOU, maybe we can see that. Uh, yeah, I think that's after the bell tonight. Uh, another one with uh, high short interest. Uh, and uh, that one's uh, not near as bad as the others. Uh, soda uh, actually was a, a decent play this morning, uh, and uh, I had a couple of decent plays out here. I rarely play futures, uh, but uh, this morning I pretty much was sitting right at the uh, desk when uh, the news rolled in from uh, Germany uh, that the world was going to hell in a handbag. And uh, you know, Normally, if you can click quick enough and get in, uh, that was the uh, signal to do it. Uh, but uh, I've got uh, several shorts already, uh, added that one, played it already, and uh, out uh, also had the ESs. Uh, but uh, a lot of good trading out here today. Uh, K-O-I-R is one more. I think that's another one after the bell, either tonight or in the morning. Uh, but if you're looking for plays, uh, maybe best to avoid uh, or uh, hop on uh, in a short squeeze. Uh, because of a lot, but uh, KOIR, eh, I guess it's probably not, it's up just a little bit here today. Didn't check the news to see, but I think it's uh, earnings after the bell tonight. But those are a few to be watching. Uh, and uh, Soda, uh, just a huge short interest on that. Uh, I don't know if uh, you'll get called on any overnight short on that, but that with a short interest of 40%, uh, a lot of broker dealers will not let you carry that overnight. Uh, Germany is in a recession. Uh, probably talked about this at some of the other shows on uh, TFNN today, but uh, uh, Germany industrial production came in and dived 1.8% uh, month over month. So we've got two months uh, in a row. Uh, we've already got a, a quarter where Germany has been down. Uh, it would be beyond the pale to think that we're not going to get at least one more uh, month so we'll have two quarters in a row in Germany uh, where industrial production is down. Uh, of course, two quarters in a row with uh, uh, declining numbers is pretty much a, a good clue of a recession. It was much worse than the expected half a percent decline uh, that was expected. Uh, but uh, uh, they were pretty much holding off this news, I think, until uh, the uh, elections here were over. Uh, we also have a problem uh, in uh, Greece. Uh, let's see if I can actually find that. Well, maybe I didn't. Uh, Greece is going to actually have a uh, referendum on their uh, bailout package tonight. Uh, I suspect, even though that they vote on it, uh, no one's going to live up to it. And uh, we'll probably know in the next day or two whether or not uh, Greece is out of the, the uh, euro. But I suspect that uh, some of the uh, market gas that we've had today a uh, little bit of uh, Pepto-Bismol probably would help some traders out here on the big moves. We haven't had a 300-point uh, down move uh, at the end of a day uh, since about 2011. So uh, if we do close uh, back below, uh, significantly lower out here, uh, do look uh, for a lot of people to probably stand up because we are going to have uh, one of the biggest... Uh, 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 one of the uh, biggest uh, moves out here, at least to the downside, if this thing sticks. Uh, let's see if I've got, uh, let me close that here. i got to get around here and look for uh, the uh, Dow. Uh, where is it at on this thing here? I'll look at it on mine. 
what do we have here? Dow Jones. Yeah, we're under 13,000 on the Dow, uh, but what is that? On that, oh, minus 255. We have improved just a little bit, uh, uh, but uh, it will uh, it will be that. Let's see what else we have. We've got about three minutes. Uh, wanted to take just a little bit more. Uh, Amazon uh, was, had been trying to pump up their stock last couple of days uh, on news that uh, they're putting Amazon lockers in staple stores. Uh, to me, what kind of store would allow someone else to put lockers in the front of their store like Staples if you didn't think you were going out of business and you're just hoping you got every dime you could why it went out? Because they're going to come to your store. Why would they go in and pay more if uh, the whole idea is that they're buying something uh, yet from another company at a lower price? And all you are uh, is getting a small cut for the lockers up front. Uh, this, I think, has more to do with Staples than it does Amazon, uh, that they would take a deal like this. Because uh, I can't imagine if you walked by those and thought, well, why did I buy this here? I could have bought it for 15% less on Amazon and have it delivered to these uh, uh, lockers and just picked it up here and not had to talk to anybody or, uh, you know, have to uh, put up with a pimply-faced kid uh, that's checking you out or any of the other stuff that goes on with it. But, uh, uh you know, I kind of thought this was an interesting deal uh, when there wasn't going to be sales tax. Uh, and maybe they can cut delivery costs a little bit. Uh, I'm just curious. I could see maybe this at a CVS uh, where they don't sell so many of these same kind of products. Uh, but it's awful weird that you'd find Staples, which does sell a lot of things that Amazon sells, uh, giving them room up front. So, uh, I don't know, really... It kind of scratches my head. I, I'm kind of scratching my head. Um, I'm thinking Amazon does go much lower. Uh, every facet of their business is, is being go on, gone after by someone else. And uh, they're trying to make money by selling something uh, at break even when uh, others are selling uh, their products at 40 or 50% margin and still making a back end uh, to that uh, business. So eh, I'm thinking that uh, Amazon's going to crack, kind of like Apple, uh, one of these days soon. I uh, heard uh, Tom and Steve speaking this morning, and they were saying, well, uh, what kind of ads are we going to have now between now and Christmas? Uh, the, the election ads are off, and uh, they kidded that it was all going to be about, uh, uh, you know, Viagra ads, that kind of stuff. Uh, and, uh, the, uh, you know, I'm going to tell you, if you really haven't thought about it, uh, they spent a billion dollar on a uh, billion dollars on presidential ads, and maybe just because we're here in Ground Zero, where we were a battleground county, uh, I'd see a lot more. But what we do here, oh, oh, we're playing short because I'm short today. Yes, we do. But anyway, uh, Microsoft's got a billion and a half dollars going into advertising. Uh, just remember that if you're watching them. I think they're going to be uh, hold, held up uh, probably uh, the best of the tech sector out here. A uh, billion and a half dollars going into pushing Windows 8. And uh, we are... St okay. What type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Wealth Management. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportions of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley believes a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what an asset allocation and a Morgan Stanley Wealth Management financial advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, first vice president and financial planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Wealth Management, LLC. Member SIPC.
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Millionaires are made every day. The fact is, living your dreams is possible. Someone, somewhere is going to get rich. My recommendation is, let that be you. Each day, someone is making the decision to better themselves and creating a plan to fulfill their financial dreams. Let that be you. The key to turning dreams into reality is to take massive action. Let that be you. I'm Steve Rhodes, co-host of The Money Master Show with Tom O'Brien, seen daily at TFNN. And I can help you with your journey to great wealth. I'll show you how to create the ultimate financial edge, a set of tools, insights, and strategies that are part of my daily newsletter service, Mastering Probability. You'll have direct access to me by phone, email, and my private library of trading and investing secrets for 30 days with an unconditional money-back guarantee. I'll take your trading to the next level. Click on my name, Steve Rhodes, on the homepage of TFNN.com and turn your dreams into reality. Mastering Probability, folks. Let that be you. This segment is brought to you by Goldfields. For more information, just click the Goldfields banner on the front page of TFNN.com. We were talking about Microsoft uh, and the billions, actually a billion and a half dollars they're going to spend on Windows 8. Uh, part of that also is going to be talking about uh, Windows Office that will be available sometime in February uh, for both uh, the iPad and Google uh, operating systems. Uh, they're going to charge about a hundred bucks for it. Uh, it's supposed to come with the uh, current Windows 8 Surface RT tablet uh, and the later Surface Pro. Uh, but uh, you know, a lot, a lot of advertising coming on in uh, Microsoft. And just uh, think how much a billion bought in television presidential ads. Uh, MIPS technology, one of my old favorite, uh, made a lot of RISC processors. Uh, uh, RISC stands for Reduced Instruction Set uh, Processors. Uh, they're going to be bought out privately, uh, so watch for them kind of slowly exit stage left. Um, one of the reasons we, uh, it's a fairly decent bet uh, to be short uh, coming out of the day after an election. Uh, if you go back and look since 1984, and I think uh, even 1980 was the same thing, but I did just went back and looked to 84, uh, you're normally down uh, at least three quarters of a percent. Uh, there was one year in 96 where you were up 1.4%, uh, in 2004 up 1.1%. Uh, 2008 we were off 5%. Uh, a lot of uh, turmoil after elections. Uh, maybe it's people with a little bit of sour grapes. Uh, but uh, also, I think uh, a lot of people 
uh, looking forward to uh, what's happening in the marketplace uh, and make decisions based on who wins presidential elections. Uh, so we're uh, going to continue to watch that. But, uh, even over, I think even over uh, uh, the last, uh, since 1960, uh, the average down day is about three quarters of a percent uh, after the, the day after the election. So uh, a rare bullish one in 96. And uh, we continue to kind of watch that. But uh, this is something to think about uh, in four more years when we come back. A few other things that kind of caught my eye or made me uh, remember some things going on in the market. Uh, you know, Jesse Livermore was a, uh, one of the uh, big-time traders uh, of uh, eh, probably about 1905 to 1932. Um, he was a, uh, they called him a plunger because he was big on the short side and made uh, a lot of money famously on the short side, made a lot of money on the long side too. Uh, he was kind of an all or nothing uh, kind of guy. Remind me, if you've ever seen that movie Tin Cup, where the guy just had to go for it, uh, kind of a real Jesse Livermore kind of attitude. Uh, so he would go boom and bust. When he was uh, uh, on, uh, he was on and he made about $350 million uh, during the crash of 1929, uh, which he's uh, pretty famous for. But uh, uh, one of the things that kind of hit my uh, radar when I hear about a disaster is a uh, kind of a paragraph out of his book. Uh, what had happened was the, I think it was the 1908 uh, San Francisco earthquake. And I'm just going to read a little part to you here while we uh, before we go to the break. It was an awful disaster, but the market opened down only a couple of points. The bull force forces were at work, and the public is independently responsive to news. Is never independently responsive to news. You see that all the time. If there's a solid bull foundation, for instance, whether or not the papers call a bull manipulation is going on at the same time, certain news items fail to have the effect they would have if the street was bearish. Um, anyway, he was short. I wasn't plunging recklessly. I was playing conservatively. There was nothing that anybody could do to undo the earthquake. Was there? They couldn't restore the crumpled buildings overnight, even if it was free or gratis or nothing, could they? All the money in the world couldn't help much in the next few hours, could it? And um, anytime I see a disaster like we saw on the eastern seaboard, um, what we find is uh, a lot of times the market will ignore it for a while. I don't. I can't tell you for sure today's market action is based on tax selling, uh, a delayed reaction to the eastern seaboard. Uh, there is no alternate history for us to go back and replay this, taking each of those factors out. Uh, Romney win. Um, doing that is kind of a child's game. But one thing I've always worried about is, uh, and played fairly well, were disasters. And I think probably because of those couple of paragraphs in reminiscence of a stock operator. Uh, but uh, as far as I know, this is... Uh, uh, maybe uh, Sandy coming back to pay us off. Uh, I suspect it has a lot more to do uh, with those uh, taxes uh, going up higher next year. Uh, maybe thinking that, uh, especially with Germany now in a recession, uh, maybe it's uh, time to exit stage left, take your money, and uh, pay a little less taxes. We'll be back in a minute. We'll start getting into some charts. heard Tom O'Brien on the air and you've seen him on Tiger TV as well as being featured as a regular CNBC guest and contributor and now you can have access to his expert trading advice each morning through his daily trading newsletter Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter Market Insights gives traders, investors and money managers a thorough strategy for trading stocks, options and indices every market day. Market Insights comes out each market day before 9.30 a.m. and provides traders with Tom's daily commentary, opinion, and specific trade recommendations on the markets. Using advanced Fibonacci methods, volume indicators, Gartley patterns, candlestick charting, gaps, and market timing, Market Insights will give you specific trade recommendations including entry, stop, and exit prices. The summer is over and traders are back. Get your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. 
you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intraweek trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. This segment is brought to you by Crocodile Gold. For more information, just click the Crocodile Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. As we come back, uh, if you listened to my show yesterday, uh, you probably heard a caller come in and ask about uh, buying uh, a, basically a play for, uh, uh, you know, Apple products, semiconductors, all that. Um, I probably have to apologize. Uh, he probably felt like he got a double barrel shotgun in the chest of, of rock salt uh, as I went through six of the uh, stocks that pretty much uh, are 90 percent of the input of Apple tablets and cell phones. Uh, but uh, there, there was a reason why and uh, when four of the six of those charts look horrible uh, it is not time to start buying. Uh, we're going to go through a couple of other charts here today, but uh, I didn't know that Apple was going to blow up today uh, and go back down, but there's uh, maybe we'll go through those charts a little bit. But a lot of those uh, still have support levels that are still uh, greatly lower uh, than we've seen today. So I don't think we're probably going to see uh, Apple uh, actually start moving higher uh, until we see those input stocks actually bottom out. Uh, so I would continue to look at those six stocks. Maybe we'll look at them uh, before the end of the show today, depending on what we have. Uh, you know, we've got so many of these stocks that had uh, took off on big volume that had open gaps and they were getting close to it. Uh, one that we talked about yesterday was Wisdom Tree Investments, or maybe the day before, I can't remember, WETF. On that, we're finally getting a few of these stocks back into support levels. 
And on this one, what you had was a huge volume up day uh, that was on 5 million shares on the uh, 3rd of February. Uh, it gapped up with, yeah, uh, 5 million shares. Uh, we're finally getting back into it, and this is exactly what you want uh, if you're looking for stocks out here that uh, might be playable, and that is a very low retest of those gap ups on signs of strength. Uh, stocks will break out. They almost always eventually come back to that breakout area. If they do, you can give a, a fairly decent idea that maybe there is some support levels there. Uh, Wisdom Tree Investments, WETF, eh, probably not too far. Uh, but I suspect we still see a test of the low or at least more of this gap. And uh, I think maybe over the next couple of days we're going to see it. Um, what I had been uh, showing uh, over the last two weeks uh, to let everybody know is uh, the ABC down uh, and confluence levels of the S&P. Uh, what I've been showing is a fairly consistent chart uh, that shows that we are looking at 1350 very strongly as the only support level left. Uh, we blow through 1408 today. We've blown through 1395 today. Uh, 1408 was a fairly strong support level. 1395 a little less so. Uh, but it's all going to be about the last uh, uh, sh hour of the show. We've got about 3.1 billion shares, so we're still tracking for a big day in volume and price, um, at least probably the most we've had in the last year, year and a half, uh, uh, to the downside. Uh, just remember, uh, statistically, uh, that when you move 500 points in the Dow and you try to compare that to 100 points in the Dow, it's not five times as much. It's 9.6 times as much when you're around 12,000, 13,000 in the Dow. Uh, those numbers uh, and movement in a single day like that for a signal is logarithmic. It is not linear. So when we see these huge moves out here, uh, don't be surprised. And, you know, uh, my guess is we're probably going to close the lows of the day. Uh, we've got too many people that kept on buying on every move up, uh, on these huge moves down. Uh, very few people, resident, go ahead and close out their uh, longs uh, the first day. Normally you get uh, two or three of these gap downs, uh, and then that's it. So if we could gap down two more times, maybe over the next week, 10 days or so, uh, and get into that 1350 area, that's where I'd start closing out my shorts. We added a couple of them, uh, or another short today, and uh, uh, a, uh, a long position uh, in energy today that I think uh, probably going to do fairly well, uh, both of them. But uh, we got uh, short, I think, about 9.50 this morning. Already had several positions short, uh, already had uh, puts. And uh, I think the longer we hold on to those, the better they're going to do. I think this is just the start of... Uh, uh, of a decent one. And, and of course, we could come back to 1350, freak a lot of people out, and that would still uh, be nothing more than a big retrace in a uh, up move uh, that people would think that they couldn't buy. So if uh, we gap down, volume still remains uh, low, let's say, in the next two gaps. Uh, I may be a buyer back down there at 1350 in the S&P. Uh, but what I'm showing on uh, the uh, Tiger TV and in the den is the confluence levels. That is the difference between this uh, 318 or 38, yeah, 381 of one and the 618 of the other uh, Fibonacci retracement levels when they're over uh, uh, a length of time uh, that's significant and when they are extremely tight. And in the S&P, I'm going to say the five or ten points that this one uh, is in, even I think it's seven or eight points when I look at it, uh, that's very significant. If it was over... Well, let's say 30 or 40 points, uh, no big deal. That's not a real, that's kind of a mushy uh, consolidation area. But uh, when you get into these, a lot of times uh, when you look at this kind of chart, uh, confluence does work extremely good in these conditions. And you want to be looking right at that 1350 level when it comes in there uh, for a super high tick. Uh, if I was thinking long, and I'm not at the moment, I'm thinking short, uh, but uh, thinking about closing my short positions, that's exactly where the next level I'm going to be looking about closing uh, these short positions is going to be. But, uh, you know, uh, can, can everybody say this is just a one-day thing and it's over? Um, I think people have been buying every dip out there for the last couple of years. Uh, I think this is different now. I think we now know that you, not only is uh, China not uh, growing the way we know uh, we 
uh, would like. Uh, but the single economy that was doing well, Germany, uh, has slipped into recessionary numbers, and I think it's probably only going to get worse. Uh, that Bernanke has had a wonderful bubble for us, uh, but maybe those days are over. Uh, if we break 1350, um, maybe I'll talk about that tomorrow. I don't suspect on the first bounce that we are going to break it. I think that's going to be probably a, a time where we could play maybe a bounce to 13, 1395, uh, about where we're at now. Uh, but uh, this volume today signals that we probably have uh, some aftershocks, just like a uh, uh, earthquake, and that those aftershocks are probably going to. Normally, you get one like this, you get two more. So I'm going to be uh, holding my shorts for a little bit longer, and uh, I mean my shorts, my short positions, not my underwear. So anyway, uh, trying to think what else we have going on out here. Wanted to see some other stocks that were interesting. Uh, unfortunately, just about everything is today. Um, some of these stocks are holding up fairly well, and you know, they give me a pause to think uh, if this market does turn around. Uh, if you are looking for the counterfactual, you think maybe I'm all wet here and the market's going to pop. Uh, Vitamin Shop VSI is one of the few stocks that's really holding up well. Uh, it did test its previous high on higher volume, so you can hope that you get one more test of that $61.89 yesterday. Uh, you had strong uh, move, a sign of strength yesterday, up to that high. Of course, you've closed back below it, which is bearish, uh, but one of the uh, stronger stocks out there in the market. Uh, there's some other stocks that have been basing out for a while. Uh, let me see if I can get to anything else. Now, always, you can give me a call at 877-927-6648. That's 877-927-6648. Uh, don't be like the other caller. If you've been smoking an entire uh, bowl full, please don't call. <laughs> I don't know when that, what day was that, Monday? Anyway, I have a feeling uh, he was on shrooms or, or uh, uh, smoking uh, <clears throat> something. Uh, another one that's still up here at the top that's kind of interesting is Chico Fast Foods, CSH. Uh, this one uh, pretty much tested uh, yesterday. It's high on similar volume. Um, it has come back and tested that low. Uh, but, you know, if we did get uh, some kind of great news out in the marketplace, there are a few stocks out here that would be uh, interesting. Um, you know, we've got some that I think have gotten a, a fairly decent signal. They have hit a sign, uh, the top. Uh, we've got confirmation of that today on Bank of America. Uh, it uh, got, eh, I'm going to say, close enough to its previous high uh, because the volume was so low. Uh, if I get within a few pennies of a previous high and the volume's 50%, a lot of times that's enough for me to just go ahead and pull the trigger and say uh, that stocks, uh, you know, should be shorted, or if you're long, it should be sold. Uh, you had the March 19th high at $10.10, 10 uh, 600 and, yeah, 660, yeah, 660 million shares. Uh, came in with a half of that a few days ago on November 2nd. Uh, kind of danced around here, but we are coming down. Uh, the volume is uh, starting to pick up over the last few days. So I'm going to say we probably have uh, some confirmation in some of these sectors uh, that that uh, market is... Uh, eh, Fairly weak. Let's see uh, if I've got uh, uh, some scans here. Oh, I wanted to do and see how uh, some of these stocks were doing in the Apple sector. The only other one that's uh, really strong out here is Arms Holdings. Uh, that's held up well no matter what the market's done. Uh, it's had uh, two gaps up already. It may get one more before it plays out. Uh, the secondary manufacturers continue. Uh, to be weak, and we looked at that pattern extensively yesterday. I'm just going to go through them real quick and see if we see anything in that kind of movement. And eh, there's not a whole lot in these. I was hoping maybe Qualcomm would really start to do something. Uh, a little higher volume in Qualcomm today. It did gap down. We'll have to see how that works at the end of the way. Skyworks Solution SW, uh, SK uh, coming into that. Uh, gap. Uh, it pierced it uh, two days ago. Uh, light volume in it. So maybe that's, we're starting to see maybe some green shoots here uh, in an oversold condition in a lot of these uh, stocks. Uh, Triquint Semiconductor 
I think it still needs to get down to the uh, $4.25 level one more time, $4.30, somewhere in that area. Uh, but, you know, uh, they don't look as bad as they did maybe yesterday. Uh, but uh, I think, again, this is the first drop. Uh, any kind of weakness is going to be sold hugely in the last probably 20 minutes of this marketplace. Um, let's see if I can get an update here on my stuff and see what we're looking at in volume and movement. See if there's anything else out there. Uh, you know, probably uh, if this continues like it is, we're looking for a close somewhere around 1385, 1386 on the S&P cash. Uh, I think, yeah, a point below probably the low a day is where this most likely will end up. We've got that uh, uh, over 3 billion share day already. Uh, and that uh, pretty good indication that we're going to continue selling uh, into the close. If we don't have much of a, re uh, a response tomorrow and Thursday by, say, 1 or 2 o'clock, probably going to sell off Thursday and into the Friday's close. So uh, I don't think that there's anything that gives me pause to think I want to be long. Uh, maybe Monday would be the first day. Uh, even if these uh, stocks do hold up, we find some support levels. Uh, it still would make me incredibly nervous. I think uh, right now I need to see that 1350 on the S&P with light volume to signal maybe the first chance of getting a significant bounce out of this market. Uh, but uh, yeah, looks right now I'm going to say yeah, uh, 1385, 1386, 1387 looks like a likely close in the S&P. Uh, again, uh, the last 20. 30 minutes of the, eh, I'm probably going to say 20 minutes of the day, uh, but if we don't get significant movement upwards in the next, uh, what, 13, 14 minutes, I think we're probably going to see some market on close orders start to run, uh, probably even start seeing uh, a lot more weakness than we have already in gold. Uh, gold did take off uh, this morning. A lot of people saw it. It's up six bucks now, uh, but uh, it had a really nice pop. Uh, but uh, I think we're seeing some forced liquidation, especially in Europe uh, with some of the pressure. Uh, that pressure came oh, across the pond. They're selling stuff that they have big profits on now. Uh, also look for these countries in trouble to sell something that they can. Uh, imagine having a house out there and saying you had to have a fire sale on it. You're willing to take 50 grand. Uh, everybody's going to come in and offer you 25 grand. Uh, I saw that... Uh, I think an article earlier this week about it. Uh, the worst thing you can do to sell your property in a hurry is say that the highly motivated individual, because they all come in and offer half of what you're asking, uh, and nothing ever gets sold. Uh, I think that's the same thing. Is uh, You may have something you would like to sell that's the stinker, but it doesn't matter. Whatever you do, as soon as you try to sell it, if you've got any size, uh, illiquid markets, uh, it drops in half. So a lot of times uh, they'll sell what you can sell. In this case, uh, a lot of these countries are sitting on a lot of gold. Uh, traders in Europe are sitting on a lot of gold. Do not be surprised to see gold sell off uh, based on just that, that it, they can sell it, they can get cash for it without taking too big a hit, uh, and they end up keeping their losers and selling their winners. Of course, we know that's exactly the opposite of what you want to do, but when you're backed into a corner, You've been spending uh, twice as much as you uh, bring in. Eh, maybe a parable for us here in the United States. Quit the spending. Anyway, we'll be back in a minute. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. 
In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a better trader each week in his newsletter, The Gold Report. With over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week, in addition to covering the XAU, HUI, GLD, and Dollar, The Gold Report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market. For your 30-day free trial to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report, log on to TFNN.com today. Don't miss out on this great offer. Act now. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Let me tell you something, folks. I have people coming up to me saying, I just can't believe the amount of work that Steve does on his newsletter. Yeah. And I says, I absolutely agree. That is a recent clip from the Money Masters show that Tom and I do each day at TFNN. My newsletter service, Mastering Probability, is much, much more than a newsletter. Yes, it's outperformed the S&P 500 by 100% during the last 15 months. But more importantly, it's an extraordinary education, a roadmap for your success. And it's yours risk-free for the next 30 days. Just go to the homepage of TFNN.com and click on my name, Steve Rhodes, and then Mastering Probability. Because everyone needs a success strategy. For most, it's a competitive edge, the will to win, the drive to overcome any obstacle. Whatever you call it, winners find a way. Find your way to Mastering Probability today. Because your journey to extraordinary rewards is just one click away. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. As we come back, we're going to look at Apple itself and see where it's looking for. I'm going to say that uh, 522.18 is wide open, and that's the last major low from May 18th of this year. Uh, 26 million shares. We're going to easily have that kind of uh, volume today. So uh, I suspect in the next couple of ratchets down uh, that we're easily going to get into that kind of uh, uh, 522 area. And I don't think it would be a, a big deal. Uh, a lot of people are still saying, you know, Apple's done. Um, this is just uh, the kind of move you get uh, when you get two huge movements um, and Let's see if I can show it a little bit better. Um, you know, that had a nice ABC. Let me clean this up a little bit. Had a nice ABC up. Uh, it pretty much did everything that you would want to see uh, in that ABC. Uh, let me see here. And, uh, you know, you still had an 802 projection for that thing, uh, but uh, it kind of ran out of gas at uh, 705. Uh, that gap down, I think, happened the day after I did my special report for the Tech Insider on the uh, uh, on the stocks in the Apple supply chain and what everybody should be watching. Uh, but uh, you know, didn't quite get up there. The volume really ran out on uh, just in the last 15 or 20 days uh, up to that 705 high, and it's pretty much been rolling over uh, since. But uh, you know, just a test of the 522 May 18th looks awful certain. Uh, as we uh, go in to close out this day. 
I'm trying to think of any other. Someone asked about Yahoo. I, I guess my opinion on it. Uh, it's a giant short squeeze to uh, uh, drive uh, long-term shorts that think that this uh, stock is going out of business. Um, what do we have? I mean, it's uh, getting up to this, uh, you know, the $18 range. Can it hit that? But eh, my opinion of it, uh, stinky company, uh, very little chance of it actually turning anything around. Uh, may, can it get back up there, eighteen dollars and eighty-four cents? Yeah, and is all the yakking about uh, the new uh, CEO that she's a pregnant woman, all the all the song and dance, uh, it has little to do with her actually turning this company around. Uh, it's all about uh, trying to uh, uh, maximize the amount of money that they have, uh, but their market uh, is broke, and especially since they don't have a great market on mobile. Uh, continues to be problematic now. Uh, can they put licks, uh, lipstick on this pig for a while? I think that's exactly her job. She went there to to uh, do a lot of song and dance, uh, bring a high profile lady in like that to turn this thing around. Uh, you can't really uh, rain on her. You're a big uh, mean brute, uh, and uh, and I think uh, she's the uh, eh, kind of the uh, dog and pony show out here before this thing takes the. Quick header. I think it's uh, headed back down into that twelve dollar range. Uh, after probably, you know, there's going to be a little honeymoon with her, and then that's going to be it. I just don't see how she could, or anyone, not just her, uh, turn this pig around. Everybody in the dog has tried, uh, and it's never worked. Uh, eventually, she's going to run up against the management in this company, which has been acting like major, uh, major league jackasses forever. And uh, I think that's probably the thing that makes me think that nobody's going to come in and do anything good. Uh, just being fattened up, trying to uh, shake as many shorts as you can and uh, sell off the stock and distribute it as much as you can uh, to those that will eventually be known as bag holders. Uh, would someone buy them? Don't think so. Uh, too much debt, uh, not enough there. Uh, you could probably redo everything that uh, they do uh, for pennies on the dollar. Kind of like uh, Microsoft buying Skype. I just never understood why they bought Skype for $8 billion when they could have uh, written everything well under a billion in-house and owned it and redesigned it, maybe even a little better than it was. Anyway, you all have a safe and wonderful day. I will see you tomorrow.